All right, so we have 2016 Yukon XL. And we're just gonna do the brakes on this real quick. So, now let's see, let's see what I did. There's, yeah, here are two bolts right here and here that hold this on. All right, so I just pop those two loose. And then, uh, and took a screwdriver and wedged it in. Pop the calipers free. So now I'm gonna pop these brake pads off and then use them to compress the, the calipers. Uh, The brakes on this are super easy. Like <laughs> some of the easiest I've ever done. So, anyways, I'm just take that right up there and get you one of these. I'll show you the box for this, but. I know some people like to stay away from Harbor Freight, but some of their stuff isn't bad, you know. But it's not a bad deal. I think I don't know what this was, like 30 bucks maybe or something, but just a disc brake and caliper set. That's got a a spreader. This right here, you just just take that and feed it through. And then once you put that on the inside lip there and put this against the brake pad. Then you can just turn, you know, spin the handle and and it'll spread that apart there. Like so. Back it off of this side, put it on the other one. Compress this side. I don't bother bleeding them or anything with this method. It's just nice and easy. No mess. If I wanted to, I could actually hook a box wrench or something on this. Could hook up a box wrench and just turn it that way, but or keep it still.
All right, there you go. Some compressed calipers. Some people are like helping on replacing the calipers and stuff, but I don't know. They're the hardware. Yes, you can or you can't, but. Personally, I've done a lot of these and I don't find it matters much. Leave a hateful YouTube comment if you want. I'm not really gonna change my my thoughts. Snaps right in. And I guess I'll show you this part in case you're an absolute noob at this so when this was unhooked I went to push it on this was sticking out there so you, there's no way to get it on there so you just depress that and same with the bottom realign them two bolts just line that bad boy up and then lie in the bottom. I don't have a torque wrench. These are all done by feel. And there you go. Let's throw the tire back on. And tighten the rest up and you're good. Nice and easy. Oh man, I'm going to have to take this back off. Here's another thing you get to work. <laughs> Look out for it. I was just kind of hastily in there. I twisted it the wrong way. We don't want that. Might as well bring you along for the ride since this is essentially what you do when you start off. Although, this is just fixing an error on my part. So I'm just loosening these two back bolts again. You don't really get to see how easy this is. Take the kink out of that wire or the, the hose, snap it right back on. Oh. I know there was a case made using that grease and stuff like that, but 
Never really had that much of a problem by not doing it. And this was after like 83,000 miles. So, oh, the wrong angle. Got down pretty low, but it still wasn't squealing on this side. The other side was. something I want to point out here you know, I've got the got the jack under there but anytime you work under under a car always always use a jack stand as well last thing you want is this thing coming down on you I know jacks are pretty good, but redundancy is better at this department. Mm. All right. Well, more than welcome to stay on and see the tire be put back on. Well. Might have to bear with me because I really blew my wrist out earlier working in the yard. So. You may hear me whimpering when I go and look at this. Now, if you don't have yourselves one of these and you're just relying on a four way, get yourself an impact wrench. I don't care if it's Ryobi, whatever, Harbor Freight version. Very nice to have. And of course, this, this socket is key for these bolts because they're special. Anti theft. That probably every thief has. And we're skipping a bolt. Skipping. 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 There we go. Get that jack stand out of there. 